Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the com video. If you've been looking forward to AMD's Polaris architecture, or potentially even a new APU from the company, then you're going to want to tune in to Computex 2016. AMD have formally announced it will be conducting a live webcast and press conference during Computex 2016, which is going to take place Wednesday, June the 1st, 2016, at 10 a.m. CST or 10 p.m. EDT time. Now, during this, we should see various AMD executives, and this includes Dr. Lisa Su, who is the President and General Manager, the Computing and Graphics Business Group uh, General Manager, uh, Jim Anderson, and finally, the Senior Vice President and Chief Architect of Radium Technologies Group, Raja Khadori. Now, obviously, we're going to be able to access this pretty easily. You just go to amd.com slash computex, and it's also going to be available on AMD's own investor relations page, which is ir.amd.com. And naturally, they will also upload this on YouTube and other different uh, platforms. So, what can we expect AMD to show? Well, hopefully a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Polaris probably being the most important. Because the reason we know Polaris is most likely going to debut at this event is because various journalists in Asia have leaked the fact that they've actually received invit invitations excuse me, to the event. And this is supposedly going to act as the Polaris 10 launch event. Now, what that means is that we should theoretically get indications of the performance of the cards, um, we should start seeing review samples sent out, and more than all of this, we should, theoretically speaking, know how all of this stacks up against NVIDIA's own cards, which is really good. It basically means that if you've been on the back burner or on the fence between should I upgrade to the GTX 1070 for sake of argument, or is it better to wait for a high-end Polaris 10 card and how is that going to even stack up because AMD have gone on record and said that we're more aiming at the mainstream, but the company simultaneously have also said that they want the mainstream cards to be able to run virtual reality. So what's mainstream? Like is mainstream of Polaris 10 going to be the high-end comparison of like the Fury X? Is it going to be faster? Is it going to be a lot slower? Your guess is as good as mine. We're not going to know, of course, until we finally get these cards in someone's hands and for leaks to start happening. And what makes it even more ambiguous is the specifications of Polaris 10 have been up and down absolutely like a yo-yo over the past uh, few weeks or even months, judging by the rumours. So, for example, one rumour says that we're only going to see 32 compute units for the high-end Polaris 10. Others have said it's going to be a minimum of 36, and this is backed up by a couple of benchmarks and supposed leaks which have happened. And some folks have even said that the full Polaris 10 could be up to 40 compute units. So, which one is it? Mm. My personal guess is it's going to be a minimum of 36. I'm basing this purely on the fact that the PS4K APU supposedly has 36 compute units. So it would be kind of bizarre for the desktop iteration to have fewer, but... I guess there is always, always that possibility. And on top of that, the PS4K APU isn't confirmed by Sony yet. So it might be that Bob happened to have wrote down those specifications wrong when he leaked that to the internet. What we do know, however, is that we should see APUs launch as well on this very same date. Um, and supposedly this is going to be based on Bristol Ridge and Stony Ridge APUs. Now, what this should theoretically mean is AMD are going to start planting the seeds for Zen. How it's going to do that is it's going to say, no, we're just going to make a clean break. There's not going to be, as far as I'm aware anyway, maybe they change their mind, but from what I understand, they're going to make a clean break away from the current architectures. So, for example, AM3, and instead they're just going to focus on AM4. What that means is that you should also be able to simply hot swap and go for some at Ridge if you so desire. So for the sake of argument, you'll buy a 7th generation APU. Six months down the line, you say to yourself, eh, actually I need a high-end CPU and I want to convert this system into a gaming PC. That's fine. Then all you have to do, switch out the APU, 
and maybe put in a new Zen CPU if that's what you want to go ahead and do. And it makes a really good way to essentially turn the system, let's say six or nine months in the future, into a different computer. This is really good if, for example, you have an older CPU now, for example, 2500K or 2600K, and you want to see what goes on with, let's say, KB Lake and Zen, but you want another system right now, for example, for streaming or whatever, then you could go ahead, buy an APU, which sets you up for AM4, especially if you've got enough memory, and then if, once again, six, nine months into the future, you say, okay, Zen's actually pretty darn good, I'm going to go ahead and just switch this PC into a full Zen processor, and once again, let's say Polaris 10, or maybe you want to go ahead and get a high-end NVIDIA GPU, or maybe you want to go ahead and get the whatever the hell the high-end uh, AMD uh, GPUs end up being called. We just don't know yet. I mean, obviously, we've got the Vega name, but whether that's really going to be called Vega when it's finally released, your guess is as good as mine. So it's kind of nice. And this actually tells up rather nicely with some news that AMD's actual market share has increased. Um, and we're not referring to CPUs here, just to clarify, we're referring to GPUs. So AMD's GPU market share really took a bit of a beating, primarily because of Maxwell, um, and also other software-related things. But, fortunately for AMD, this is no longer the case. The fact that they've been rather competitive in terms of pricing, the new drivers have come out, the Crimson drivers, and Virtual Reality and DirectX 12 have given them some pretty good leads, especially at certain price uh, values. It's basically meant that their discrete GPU share has gone up, and this is whether we're referring to desktop or we're referring to mobile. Essentially, as a rough guideline, back in the fourth quarter of 2015, they had 26.2%. Now it's gone up to almost 30%. So that's quite the increase, it's 29.4. And whether this is going to remain consistent, because AMD typically, and I emphasize the word typically because it does depend who releases what and what quarter stuff is actually happening, um, but typically their market share is usually the mid 30s to 40 ish percent so when it went down to like i believe it was around 20 percent don't quote me on the figures i believe it was around 20 percent desktop share so obviously that was pretty darn low for them and they were getting a bit concerned but with pascal and polaris coming out directx 12 coming out vulcan coming out the new generation of games coming out virtual reality coming out think there's probably more stuff, but let's just cut that short before we hear like another three months listing all the stuff that's coming out. It's... I, I wouldn't like to say a new way for the companies to reinvent themselves, but it's right now the time where the companies can... I guess you could say it's like a brand new land. They're like... They're exploring to a new territory and they're going to be putting down new flags. So that's good, obviously, for AMD in that respect. And they really have put down some flags in certain DirectX 12 benchmarks, which is good. Because really and truly, you shouldn't necessarily care about the results of 3D Mark or you shouldn't really care about the results of a game you don't give a shit about. But unfortunately, people do. Really what you should do is look at the values of a certain card and make a comparison based upon your budget. Unfortunately, people don't. And that's one of the reasons that both vendors really struggle to put out dual versions of a card. Because then they can say that their card is the fastest on the market and it's good for bragging rights. Now, one can argue if you've got, let's say for the sake of this video, you've got 250 US dollars, great British pounds, whatever your currency is. And that's all you've got. Realistically, you can't spend any more. Do you really care the performance of a card which costs four or five times the amount that you've got to spend. You really shouldn't, but some folks do. Um, I'm not saying you do specifically, but some people do. Really, what you should do is look at the card that you've got versus the games that you play, and then make an informed decision. 
and fortunately be people are becoming more educated in this stuff which is great with the advent of YouTube with the advent of websites with advent well not advent as I'm saying advent as in forums are new but still you get the idea people are becoming a lot more um, interested in the stuff and they're becoming a lot more informed as customers and that's good which theoretically means that Nvidia and AMD should be on to a more robust future because not only do the customers have better choices with the cards that are coming out with both Pascal and Polaris because don't get me wrong I really want to emphasize Pascal is pretty bloody impressive. No one can dispute the fact that Pascal has been very impressive. I've heard some people who said, ah, it's not that impressive. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'd love to know what you expected from the 1080 when it's basically slapping the 980 around pretty easily. In most cases, slapping around the 980 tie. And actually, most of the time, it's slapping around the Titan X as well. Pretty darn easily. Pretty darn handily. I really not sure what you expected but anywho um with virtual reality and all these other new technologies it's great so anyway i'm really getting off the point of this bloody video aren't i i've been rambling on for about five minutes well off the point but still hopefully if you enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now